foiba kompino le nyini kambang kompini ya longko alanno waratale andum ila dup foila fta ken wala dinkira ke kuri moto gambia chang adum ita kole aku sotalaje rainbow properties by j investment group le muy ku ke nyoti ila lonkan ku muni nati ka molu ma koy min la soto bulo man si a pour ye fason do la soto rainbow properties ye korda ken do lu sotali e jaban jamman jeli mamuda ani sanyam bajen jewala i be mu 20 by 20 leti ye do fana sotali e salaji 20 by 25 andu i ba be wa fi kan dadi malla nim min la fata kuma koy sotala akata ye futa rainbow properties la bunda min be sukuta jaban highway meter dan dan din ne benen sukuta traffic light o tema wala isa kumandiro ke no nyin no balla 39437652137172 760 5414 Rainbow Properties by J Investment Group Ninka Futa Nyoma Nse Nyimpa Nko Sambanyar Sambanyar Do you want to be a professional driver? If yes, worry no more Send Driving The finest among all Is here to turn you into a first class professional driver We are the Gambia's numero own solution When it comes to driving Sam Driving, we offer top-notch and affordable services that cannot be found anywhere. Rush now and start getting your lessons from our competent tutors. Sam Driving, our services include one-week driving lesson, one hour each day for just $3,300 with a provisional driving license, two weeks driving lesson for just $5,000, three weeks for $8,000, four weeks for $12,000, and five weeks for just $13,000 with a provisional driving license. We are located at Tabokoto, opposite Piccadilly Junction. Same driving, your success to save driving. Yaye money transfer ile lanna yata itole so no yata bodo dunniya ki te ko dunna karobela banko karobela ga tom fo kaina be nyin dulala uk ning ireland europe kata africa and ning america na office only be nyin dulala nyin dulala sere kunda woni talinding eh tabo ko to woni busumbala burusubi kata ba gote tu yereng Oni na kunju, katong, kata basi, biri kama ba e kata vokerewa, para feji, kata vokau, alisala kudota, kiti bankuli tu, oni mfana, trust bankuli tu, ikash pawa, kofana kali yenye mobile chopo, kofana kali yenye ire digo bata, oni digo banta, ni levita lona fana ya yeka kijamii. ibunyinjulola <laughs> 17812153767 yaye nyulela na instant yaye money transfer 
jibir labe daara drong al kondong al jia alla programo do ifam bondi al nal badi malo modula min jamme binni men bi jandro wala gada meyo ahmed talib ben sudati kan fi municipal council la meyo ah welcome meyo ahmed talib ben sudati thank you sultan are you ready to answer some tough questions any question i can answer <laughs> right okay uh since you came into office you have implemented series of projects new project called for molyaban tell us about this project all right thank you um since i came into office we've done several projects uh, and of course the key project for us is waste management because when we came into office that was the main priority of km residents uh, as you know kmc had no capacity in waste collection so we had to prioritize that um and of course the back of the dump side we had to invest a lot of resources to make it uh, manageable to reduce the problems that it poses for the communities uh, aside from that of course we did some institutional reform uh, kmc had a lot of problems in terms of capacity governance even a culture of uh, uh, doing business or providing services uh, thirdly of course we had to do a lot of refurbishment and rehabilitation of markets uh, kmc had about 18 markets around the municipality uh, but most of them were dil dil dilapidated and were in badly of uh, uh, need of rehabilitation so we rehabilitated about six markets and we built two and we are currently building another two um, aside from that of course uh, we are building parks for the youths about seven parks we are building a municipal library um, we've done some environmental programs like the planting of 190,000 trees. We have provided 10,000 bins for households within the municipality. When it comes to youth and women empowerment, uh, we have uh, developed programs that put finances in the hearts, hands of youths and women. We have created opportunities and support for artists, youths in sport, etc. And of course, uh, the council has leveraged its corporate partnerships to bring development, such as the KM Afri Park, the mini stadium we are, here, we are about to develop with uh, AfriCell, etc. As far as employment is concerned, we have directly employed 400 youths. We have revived the municipal police, which was disbanded under the former regime. Uh, and of course, through our Mbalit project, we have employed 176 youths. Um, outside of that, as far as uh, municipal infrastructure is concerned, we have built uh, uh, roads like Latkumbalo Road, which is 100% financed by the council. Uh, we have partnered, of course, with Gumworks via a project the council had to develop Latrikunda Market, the new town hall we are utilizing, uh, Willingara Latrikunda Road, Bakau New Town Road, sorry, Bakau New Town Marina Road, Kololi Tavan Road, Talinding Jilifitikunda Road which my council contributed 10% towards the cost and was fully paid for under our regime. Um, and of course, like I said, with the Latrikunda market, because the, uh, the original development with Gumworks only developed 72 shops. There was a huge demand, so our council developed 108 new shops, taking the new tally to almost 186. Okay. So we have had various uncountable uh, developments at KMC. We have brought about 19 offices for councillors, which is unprecedented. Every ward has an office for its councillor. We have brought about what we call now Community Development Fund, which amounts to $200,000 annually per councillor. So, I mean, these are all unprecedented developments. Quite interesting. Okay. Yeah. Now, let's take a look at something very important here. That is the Mbali project. Sure. How was this whole Mbali project mm -hmm. initiated? So like I said, when we came into office, uh, the KMC did not have waste management capacity. We only found two tractors. And you know, tractors are not for waste collection, they are for farming. Uh, these two tractors we had were very old. They're still around, we've maintained them pretty well. Uh, but tractors are open, one, when they pick up rubbish, they drop it along the highway. There's no enclosure. Two, the capacity is very small. And three, of course, when they do go about, the stench is unbearable because there's no enclosure. So, of course, when we came in, KMC had almost uh, 101, I believe, illegal dump sites spread around the municipality. 
All the gutters were full of rubbish. All the riverine areas from Bakao Farokono, Ibo Town, Badala, all the way to Fajukunda, Dumus were all full of rubbish. So we needed an urgent solution. Uh, the first thing I did, of course, was in the 2018 May presidential tour, I directly pleaded to the president for support. Uh, if you rewind the tape at the buffer zone when I spoke, I asked the president to make available the tractors from the Jane Commission to allow the council to attack this crisis immediately. Uh, that was not forthcoming. We also asked our ministry to support. Uh, the minister then informed us that he was working on a, a, a grant from Turkey to try and help us with compactor trucks. But we waited six months and we had a crisis on our hands. And of course, when we came into council, there was a $9 million overdraft. There was no funds to procure trucks, even tractors. We didn't have the resources. So one councillor came to my office and said, Mayor, I have an idea. Why don't we provide open trucks to each ward, each councillor? So I said, in what way? He said, well, if you can provide these trucks, we can use it for waste collection and, of course, uh, to bring uh, um, sort of uh, gravel for our community roads. So I took that idea, I developed it with a team, and we came up with the concept of the Mbalit project. And the Mbalit project concept was if we could find a partner that was willing to pre-finance, we can pay or charge a, a fee and pay this project of over a, a four year period initially. That was our plan. So we did what we do call an expression of interest. The KMC, as per the law, should have a contracts committee. Now, the contracts committee should be chaired by the chief executive officer of the council. So we set up a contracts committee chaired by the chief executive officer, two councillors, the director of planning and development, director of finance, procurement officer is there, and two experts from the community. The two experts that we got was Mr. Kebe and Mr. Barry, who were experts in sort of contracts and consultancies. So they came together and advertised what they call an expression of interest. Now, you advertise an expression of interest when you are trying a project that you are not sure whether you will have willing bidders. And the expression of interest is what we call proof of concept. So we designed the program, we advertised it, and based on the reaction we got from vendors, we said, wow, okay, there are people who are willing to enter into partnership, then now we can go for tender. A tender is request for proposal. So according to the GPPA rules, Gambia Public Procurement Authority, and the Procurement Act of the Gambia, when you do a tender, you must advertise publicly. And we did. We advertised publicly for a period of one month uh, where we had various people express interest. Okay, let me, let me come yeah. in there. Uh, sorry for cutting you. Sure. Okay, meaning it was not a restricted tender, but no. instead an open tender. It was an open tender. Okay, all right. So yes. uh, the project being an open tender, mm. so how was... Uh, your partners that eventually came in to be the winners of the, um, um, the project. Absolutely. How were they involved in this? So when we did an open tender, we had two respondents, namely TK Motors and Espas Motors. So when the two respons respondents wrote to the contracts committee, the contracts committee informed them that, of course, we want a pre-financing arrangement because we don't have the money to purchase these vehicles up front. One of the respondents dropped out, which is TK Motors, leaving only Espas. So they went into direct negotiations with Espas over a one-month period, if I remember. And they were negotiating over prices. And then they approached the council when they believed they had the best price. Now, the way the, the council works, when a committee is done their work, they bring the recommendation to the council. And the contract committee is no different. And our council is made up of three political parties, PDOIS, APRC and UDP. And pretty much when they brought the proposal to the council, the council, I remember, challenged them on the price and they had to go back to ne negotiate. What was the initial price that they brought? I, I, I cannot remember the initial price. I remember the end price. Okay. But after they came back, the council approved, which was a price of about 5 million or 5.1 million per vehicle. So the council approved that procurement 
and the procurement was such that the council had to repay the vendor over a three-year period. So we assume that any interest-related costs, all the costs the vendor was going through was incorporated in the price, which is an all-inclusive price, and we had to pay this amount over a three-year period. So once the council approved and said, yes, we will go ahead and procure these vehicles, the Contracts Committee then writes to the GPPA, Gambia Public Procurement Authority, which is an authority set up by the Constitution or the Act by an Act of Parliament. So the authority as an independent body scrutinizes this recommendation and gives this approval. So this is how this project was approved and came to light. And we are glad to say within a three year period, the council was able to pay them all back. The trucks are 100% owned by KMC and to date every single truck is still operational. Okay, thank you. Sure. Now you purchased 24 vehicles. Mm -hmm. Okay, 20, in that, those 24 vehicles, 19 got actually allocated to 19 wards in KMC. Yes. So, in 19 wards of Melbe KMC, yeah. you know, it's a jelly job for collection. Near truck or data, put a bullet or tie. It's a jelly job. So, each truck will, uh, when they come to your household, they will charge you $10 per bag. So, initially, when we came up with this project, we said, look, we want to incorporate this cost into people's property taxes. And in that way, it would be easy for us. We don't have to deal with collecting money upfront, meaning money comes with risk, theft, corruption, uh, leakage, etc. So of course, the best thing was, let us see how can we incorporate and recover this cost via people's property rates. However, when we looked at property rates, we realized that over 70% of people are not paying their rates. And this brings us to the classic problem of Gambia, where the billing system does not work because people are not paying. People are not paying because Gambia does not have an operational addressing system. The addressing system of Gambia does not work. So if you pay attention, NAWEC used to do billing. Billing started collapsing under NAWEC. They changed to cash power, which is the same as a, a, a prepaid. If you take a look at it also with telecoms, you used to have your telephone and Gamsel or Gamtel will send you a bill. Also that collapsed and they started to bring in credit. So the prepaid started becoming a widespread because Gambians are not paying bills and there's no difference with taxes. So we said if we want to go for a prepaid model, which is through the rates, it will collapse. The project will collapse. So that is when we said people have to do uh, 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 sorry, if we come up with postpaid, we say the project will collapse. So we have to do with a prepaid, which is cash up front. So we charge a very minimal fee of $10 per bag, which is very cheap. Uh, usually, let's say low income households will spend maybe $20 to $50 a week, depending on how much waste you generate. But if you have a household of, let's say, five in the family, the average you will spend is $20 every week which okay, is let, let me let me come there uh mayor ben Suda. Yeah. in banjul uh waste neighbor collect lab people yeah. don't actually pay uh west coast region for people don't actually pay so money at kmc nimble ben bali totala certainly they have to pay alien i don't think west coast is a comparison to kmc because west coast are not collecting any waste you saw the survey from sepras less than 4% of West Coast residents say they get collection from the council. So that is not a comparison for KMC. When you say free, but the vehicle is not coming, that is not free. That is no service. Now, if you compare us to Banjul, I will agree. Because Banjul has 90 plus percent uh, waste collection. But Banjul and KMC also are different. One, Banjul is 5% of our population. KMC is more than 500,000 people. Banjul is about 30,000 people. So KMC, is, Banjul is 5% of our population. Secondly, Banjul is very, very, very small. Uh, the land mass is quite tiny. KMC is almost 20 times bigger than uh, Banjul. Thirdly, only KMC embarked on this project because we had a lot of service to do. We have a lot of people to service. We have about 80,000 residents, 35,000 compounds, 15,000 businesses. 
So we have a large area to cover and a lot of waste to collect. Okay, let me go. And okay, okay. if you are to remember, uh, Banjul is also lucky that they got support from the ports, Gambia Ports Authority, where they gifted them trucks. It may not have been a gift. It may have been trucks that are, are given because the port is in Banjul. Uh, but the fact is they didn't have to pre-finance the trucks. It was given to them. And we have information with authority that even the few trucks that the Birkama Area Council are operating were purchased by Gambia government. So KMC is the only region that had to use the Malik project with its own ingenuity and innovation to bring about widespread uh, waste collection. Okay, let me, let me come in there. Uh, KMC, yeah. according to the way you put it, mm -hmm. uh, Allah partner, experts, you lady Allah through a partnership, Allah Motul Sang Ibulal Nata Al Yejo. So, Muni Ati Nalmanta directly, Kamotul Sang Al Fangle, instead, you had to go to a company, Puri Al Marko, Kamotul Nim Poches, Ni Paretanang, Bajal Al Kualtul Sina Al Yejo, as long. So, first of all, uh, it's not a loan. It's a payment plan. It's pre-finance. Okay. Um, secondly, Gambia procurement law does not allow the, go the council to go and import directly. We have to use local vendors. So the procurement rules say you advertise an expression of interest. Even if an international company bids, they have to have a local office. Mm. So the council cannot go outside the jurisdiction of a Gambia to solicit a procurement outside. So we must use a business that is operating in Gambia. That's why we advertised that local businesses can tender. And you see government purchases all the time. All of them buy vehicles locally. From the CFOs, the Shebe Maris, the TK Motors, the SPAS, all government vehicle procurement is done through local vendors. So we are no different. We have to buy from local vendors. Okay. Like I said, whether tax is charged upfront or charged prepaid is tax. So this ten ten dollars is a tax. It's a fee. It's a tax. It's no different from other taxes government levy. For example, now we see secure report. When you travel into the country, they charge you thousand dollars, even as a Gambian citizen, to enter the country. That is a, a tax that is prepaid. We see now the ferries. You cross ferry, you have to pay. So there's a lot of government services where they're charging fees and charging taxes or levying payments to generate revenue to run their operation. Okay, let me let so me, the let me, let me come, Okay, different. now let me come in there. Yeah. At what stage mm. was the government involved in this? Government don't you to double and stage you might. Yeah, so, for example, when we started this project, we engaged the ministry. Of course, they will dispute it. Um, but basically, when the trucks arrived... How, how, how did you engage the ministry? I informed the ministry that we are embarking on this project. And the information through, through, to the ministry... Through, through writing? No, it was a, a verbal uh, notification. Verbal notification. Yeah. So, just okay. to give you, take note, council is an autonomous body, a body with a high degree of autonomy. Notification is a courtesy. It is not a right. We have the right to provide services. We have the right to procure machinery and equipment or anything we believe will bring development in the council or in our region. Uh, council is a service provider. So we do a lot of services, waste collection, uh, supporting child house school, developing markets, bringing sports facilities. Uh, notification is just a courtesy, but it's not a requirement. Uh, but basically what happened, when these trucks arrived, uh, we asked for a duty waiver and it was rejected. And the council was asked to pay $13.1 million in taxes. That's why we find it very entertaining that today, the same government that has levied $13.1 million of taxes on the Malit project, and if they had their way, the Mbali project would never exist. Are the same ones saying that they would provide free service with the Mbali project we came up with if they came into the council. Okay, let me, so let me, let me quote you there. That is, yeah. that is quite uh, uh, interesting. Okay, let me come but, in there. Now, 
uh, you, the KMC, yeah. went to the government of the Gambia yes. through the Ministry of Local Government, yes. Ministry of Lands, to yes. be precise. Mm. So they rejected to give you a duty waiver yes. in order to have the trucks cleared from the port of Bandul. Yes. So kabiri nyingi kia tafaa parida, government ya ali jabi munela, ila jabi roko no kaita ndiko njine ya ati nantolte duty waiver di la KMC la, for them to be able to, for you to be able to have your trucks cleared from the port of Banjul. Yal Jabi Munela. So the uh, the explanation was not very clear. But what eventually at first we had rumors that they said because they are not notified. But the interesting thing is we buy vehicles all the time that all get duty waiver. Uh, the first purchase KMC made was five pickup trucks, one minibus, the mayor's vehicle. Um and I believe another SUV, which is the CEO's vehicle, they all got clearance, duty waiver. And in the history of councils, whenever council imports, it is automatic that they get a duty waiver because it's taxpayers' money. When you charge tax on a council, it's taking money let me, let me from the pockets of Gambians. Yeah, let me bring you back a little bit. Yeah. You know, when you wrote to the council, yeah. I am confident, uh, when you wrote to the government, yeah. I am confident go yejabiro kele. Mm. In terms of their reply, they did not reply. Honey. So they just rejected. They just the rejected the duty that. waiver. But I'm telling you, based on the explanations we had verbally, uh, was that one opinion was, okay, this is not um, meant for taxpayer. This is a business. That's what they were saying. But what we are saying is, if taxpayers are paying for a service, that is for taxpayers. When you say it is meant for a business, my question is business for who? Because anything that comes to the council, any revenue that comes to the council is being plowed back for the service of taxpayers. And this is for the collection of waste, which is a vital service. So basically, like I said, uh, I think generally they are not happy that an opposition council was able to come up with this very magnanimous project and i think many of them also were hoping that it will fail but you know we used our technical teams we used our know-how we also made sure that we engaged the community to make sure that this is a mega success and i think this is a success that other councils even across the world can learn from so basically i think uh, the project has been supremely successful uh, it touches every household and they know this. They know that every household in KMC appreciates the Mbalit project because now it is a need, it's a necessity. If you live in KMC, any day the truck misses a certain community, you will hear endless complaints. It's okay. because the whole community is depending on this project. Okay, let me come in there. So now, uh, truck holding, you got 24 trucks. 24 trucks. 24 trucks. 24 trucks. Yes. But 19 trucks were allocated to the wards. Yeah. To the wards, 19 mm. wards. Mm. So, so I truck holding, you get a truck or truck, dale better lala. So, truck or truck, I need truck killing Sanjalela. So, we have 19 trucks that are each allocated to the 19 wards. We have two reserve trucks um, that are supposed to support in case one truck goes under maintenance because the service is daily. Um, one of the trucks is also a septic MTR. They call it Dadikama, septic MTR. It is for soccerways in the markets. Um, we have two other trucks which are called skip trucks. Skip trucks are trucks that have these big metal bins. Okay, let me continue there. Jobs. I don't want yeah. you to deviate, Mr. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mayor Ben Shuda. Yeah. I want to know the price. No, I told truck. you. Yeah. The Mali trucks are 5.1 on average. 5.1. That's what we bought it for at the time. Okay. Yes, but the other trucks are, are less priced. The other four trucks that are not the compactor trucks. Okay. But I cannot remember those prices. Okay, 19 trucks are 1.1. 1. 1. So 5.1. 5.1. So let's say that will go about 105 million or so. Exactly. So, all right. So let's take a look at this here now. Mm. So uh, there are serious allegations that uh, the trucks that you have imported, Ali Trokol Meng import and Kanan through experts, you mm. move the money along, go inflation get a price hold on it. allegation on the kafu. You go Trokol 5 million years ago. Yeah. But more than that, I'm following you to Talib Ben Shuda. A man in trocol some five million la while the KMC man in trocol some five million inflation by price hold for inflation. Kerajele farm and kid 
the question is based on what? The allegation should be based on evidence. Allegation cannot be based on storytelling. If the council said we did a public tender, the trucks cost 5.1, and you say no, the truck don't cost 5.1, based on what? And this is where I think journalists have to come in. For example, you are a journalist, you have to investigate. So I think journalists have to come to the council, investigate. They have to go to GPPA, investigate. Go to Espas Motors, investigate. Go to the factory in China, investigate. And then we can have evidence of what is what. As a mayor, I am not a manufacturer. I am not a vendor. I have to just make sure that the council has followed the processes of procurement. So if today the council said, okay, we advertise a tender, anybody who is interested, come. All we see is two companies who have come. This is this price. This is that price. This one says I can pre-finance. This one says I cannot pre-finance. So based on our terms of reference of our procurement or our request for proposal, there's qualifications of a vendor. So one vendor qualifies, then the council enters into negotiation with that one vendor. Now, when somebody comes up and says, oh, this truck is overpriced, we ask them based on what? Okay, and the me, other question cost, is, okay, uh, okay. Uh, 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 um, Sultan, mm -hmm. if you have evidence mm -hmm. that there has been some pra corrupt practices, etc., why don't you take that evidence to the police? Okay, why do me, you have to come and do stories? Um, so... I will help you with your question. Okay, I, I want to chip in there before yeah. you proceed. Yeah. You said journalists is important for them to investigate. Yes. I want to help you here. <clears throat> that I have investigated yeah. uh, this particular topic that we are talking about. Yeah. And based on my investigation, I have investigated $3 million in the investigation. Based on... And I can, based yeah. on based on the findings that I am able to get from the investigation. Yes. And I'll show you proofs. Okay. That is how I operate. Yeah. I will show you proofs. Yeah. The finding you made and the whole of you throw a call, killing or killing, is less than $3 million. Where? 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 Is on that. Where is this? What is this? Where is this? This is made in China. And what is this price? I can show you the price here. Mm -hmm. It's fifty-one thousand eight hundred dollars. That yeah. is three point five million dollars. Yeah. In 3. China. Three point five million dollars. And which price? No, no, it's less than three point five million. We take a look at when the purchase was done. The when the dollar was fifty-one. Yeah. So that is two point how much? Two point five million dollars. Okay. And where was this price taken from? This price mm -hmm. was taken from a credible source. No, I said, where's, which price is this? That is what I'm saying, 51800 You took got this price from Espas? I did not take this price from Espas. Where did you get I this will, price from? I will come there. I'm asking this, you. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I, we don't answer questions here, but I will come there. Mm -hmm. Because you said journalists should investigate. So I'm yeah. trying to help you so that I can let you know that we have done our findings about this and we'll yeah. try to present evidence for you so that at least... From those evidence, you can also no, But you're not... So if now, you show me a paper with a price, yeah. I'm trying to help you. Okay. Because you got your price from the internet. At the fact, not so. So now you got a factory price mm -hmm. in China. So that factory price, the truck has to get on a ship. No, the question... Yeah. No, I'm coming no, there. Wait, I will wait, come wait, there. No, wait. I... I'll, no. You know your no. listeners. I want to help you. No, because, I, I... Before you help me, yes. I have questions to ask. No, but we you will cannot, get there. No, you cannot get there because no, you want to clarify. There. Wait, wait. Sorry, no, just, no wait. You, you have to wait. Because you, you said... Get there. You said... Yes, wait. just... You just have to wait. No, wait. I understand where you're coming from. No, no, no. You, ha you, you allow me to you come. You have to come because this is a very uh, important topic that we cannot jump and brush. No, no. You wait. I have questions to ask, and no, I will definitely accord you I, the opportunity uh, yes. to get to where you want to get. Sure. I will, but I, will I want to clarify your evidence. Uh, obviously, you yeah. will clarify this. Yeah, sure. I will be fair with you. Okay, all right? Ahead, yeah. Don't worry. Mm. Okay, so the prices that we see here, mm. this is not just a mayor paper. Yeah. This is an evident mayor alonko, not yeah. from a credible source. Yeah. And don't allow me to do, many alonko, a body can KMC, one more to kill him, yeah. One lebby jante. A man can come in another car. Your personal vehicles, yeah. Allah, let me Allah, let me remove the word personal, sorry. Allah vehicle, yeah. Allah, mm. Allah, mm. Allah, 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 two experts. So, the price is coming 51800 plus dollars. So, yeah. you know, 
omang million sabasi Gambia kodo. So and then menka foje wole mnyindi ko. Sambali project bidin ko sete up. Ah, explain a lolo no no. You went behind the bars. The party young claim the one is a PPP. What kind of PPP is this? Man, I know PPP. PPP arrangements all over the world. The private investor comes with its uh, with their with their finances and their resources, manpower and everything they invest. Operate it, understand? Build, operate and transfer over over a certain period of time. You also PPP arrangement with some valid being. I have the council being your phone hundred percent. You don't have that law. You don't teach a game. You tell me Ahmed Ben Sula. Man, so many people don't want Gambia. Can they come? I think you should. You, should, you, you some valid project. We need to establish it. I think it's okay. Ah, huh? that's all wrong. It's not in line with the laid down laid down rules of this country. You can hire a law office with all the criminal activities in Adep. Criminal to how they want to name man do my do gasi small office. You be loan the bunehe yala. You didn't say man ma you can make criminal be civil Gambia be. Ah, ngajel taxpayers money be squander for yep. Them general them inflate truck truck prices they. Ngaj inflate ko you loan wo huin ko. Truck busi ne ka yanko inflate by over two million dollars is. You talib Ahmed Ben Souda. You are criminal. Okay, this is the voice yeah. of your CEO. Yes. Chief Executive Officer. Yes. Senabu Martins. Yes. So, yamo la imemfo. Ako Ahmed, these are allegations. Ako so that's Ahmed, why I said, I will, so I, will, I, will, I will give you the chance to. I just yeah. want to learn when I am ready. Yeah, sure. Then I'll give you. I'll be fair with you, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ako Ahmed Talib yeah. Ben Souda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, prices only inflation like yeah. it. Over two million dollars. Yeah. So until now, kuma kwa ulimwa journalist. Buloto kuma kwa ulimwa kaji be photo ni alam photo ni ande. So say that Ahmed Talib Ben Souda be ni ningala sign. Muna yadi na instead of because ng price menja jang is about uh, three million dollars. I want three million dollars. Yeah. So muna yadi na sign price o keta five million di. So this is why I wanted you to help me learn. So number one, she was not CEO when we bought these trucks. We brought these trucks in 2019. The lady speaking became CEO in 2020. When we bought the trucks for 5.1 million dollars in the Gambia, in the country of the Gambia, she was not CEO. She became CEO in 2020, and during her time, we bought a truck at the cost of $5.6 million, which she bought. $5.6 million. The truck she bought is more expensive than the truck we bought, and she was the chairperson of the contracts committee. So she bought it from Espar. In 2019 or 2020, there was a story that was promoted by a certain website with these so-called evidences you say you have, that said they Googled online and found out our trucks are costing $3 million in China, in a factory in China. Now, I want to ask you, Sultan, you buy something in China for $3 million. You import it to, uh, to the Gambia via shipment. You pay customs. A business passing in Gambia sold it to us at a profit. It's not free. If you buy something in China for $3 million, you put it on a ship, you're going to pay freight, you pay duty. The business person who sells it to us makes a profit. It's not free. So when we are, you asked me a very important question when you started. You said, Mayor, why didn't you go and buy it abroad? I told you the procurement rules of the Gambia does not allow KMC to go and buy it abroad. We tender locally. So okay, a business now. person, wait, let me learn. So okay, a business person who is now competing to offer these trucks to KMC will buy it at China, maybe at 3 million. I don't know that. But maybe they buy it in China at 3 million. They will pay freight for a vehicle this size, I assume is no less than $10,000 or $500,000. They have a business operation here. They will seek to make a profit. And remember, this is a pre-financing arrangement where we have to pay it over three years. I'm sure they have inbuilt all their interest costs. But when you go online and you see something called factory price, that is what the factory in China is selling the truck for in China. Okay. So when a are Gambian you, business person, the price? Are when you a Gambian that? businessman okay. imports that factory price, 
they have to pay for fruit to put it on Maskline or Delmas or Mediterranean shipping to bring it to the Gambia. They have to pay custom duty to release it to their warehouse. They then put their profit on top of it and sell it to a local person who's buying it. Okay. And in our case, they have also built in their interest because we are paying for these trucks over three years. Now, the reason I'm telling you this, I am not the vendor. I don't know what their profit is. All we know is we are a government body that has advertised to procure. All we have to look at is who is competing with who and we get best value for money. Okay, let me and what yeah. I'm saying to you is, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you claim that KMC has bought these trucks for an overvalued price, that is your claim and that is your so-called claim. I am, I am not claiming Go that. to Banjul City Council. Who, you wait, to wait, I'm, I'm, I'm helping you. Go to Banjul City Council. Okay. Who, on behalf of Gambia Port Authority, has bought the same truck and like I said, they have bought it more expensive than KMC. So are you saying Gambia Port Authority has also bought an overvalued truck? The audio you just okay, played, okay, wait, okay. the audio you just played, uh, I think you, you have the CEO, no, uh, 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 no, Tali, but not the allowed. audio no, you no, just no, played, no, you have deviate. the CEO, no, no, no. a more expensive yeah, no, 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 you are trying to deviate, I have set of questions here, and if you make I'm my I'm trying way, to create no, clarity no, no, you are trying audience. to deviate. I'm I am not, saying, I'm not no, no, you are trying to deviate, I'm, I have a set of questions here, yes. if you allow me to ask, I will give you the opportunity to flow. But Sultan, I am trying to clear clarity for your audience. But how could you clear clarities? How could you do that if you don't allow me to ask? If I ask, it is you are at your liberty to answer. When you ask the question, so just allow me to ask my question. Don't make it difficult. You said, Mayor, allow me to ask. I allowed you. Yeah. Okay. You said you will allow me to answer. It is time for me to do a follow-up question. But when I was answering, you were trying to cut my answer. No, just allow me to come. No, Please. you have to allow me to explain to your audience because I you don't will, want you to mislead yeah, your audience. Yeah, but you, I, I've given you enough time. Now, just allow me to put yeah. follow-up questions. Yeah. It's yeah. easier like that. Yeah. But there when are, you ask, you're going to allow me to answer fully. You will, will not cut me. No problem. Sure. If there is a need for me to do follow-up questions, I will keep But you but will honestly allow me to speaking, answer fully. I will not do anything here that will definitely not accord you the opportunity to no. express yourself freely. The, the jo my okay. responsibility here is to We have to an agreement. Ask. I will allow you to ask okay. and you allow me my to answer. My responsibility here is to ask and do follow-up questions. So if I want to do follow-up questions, no. please make it easier for me. So no. now, let's get back to the topic. So. This is a sensitive topic mm. and it's very, very material. So uh, do you agree that in China you can get a truck for a truck of this nature? Do you agree that in China you can get it for about Three million dollars. Do you agree? I am not a truck importer. What you showed me is a factory price you generated from a website. Your best bet is you should have gone to Espas and say, Espas, why have you sold KMC this truck for five million? Where in China this truck cost three million? That question is not for KMC. That question is for Espas. KMC's question should be: KMC, when you procured these trucks, did you follow the procurement rules? Did you tender? Did you ask for a competitive tender? Was it closed or open? So your question started very well. But then you deviated when you said, but <laughs> Mayo, why is the truck costing three million? So you you said, why is this truck costing three million in China? Not well I'm not a truck importer. Okay, now. I don't know what a truck costs okay, in China. Okay, that's well answered. Yeah. You are not a truck importer. Yeah. That is what I will take. Exactly. Okay, now, <clears throat> when you discussed, I mean KMC, had a discussion with experts. Cabral Diam Rafal Parida. Cabri experts cosign. Betrocol wife Al Manuel. Al Wahale Taliban for Don Alma Wahale. Of course. Okay. The contracts committee entered negotiations with experts. That's what I told you. I said when the negotiations started, experts offered a price. The contracts committee beat down the price. They came back to council. The councillors, PDOIS, APRC, and of course UDP, they said, no, we think you should go back and negotiate. So when people try and say, eh, why did Mayo buy this truck? Mayo does not buy trucks. If somebody is accusing anybody, it will be the CEO of the contracts committee as the council as a body. The mayor does not even vote when there's procurement. I am not there to advertise procurements and say, eh, you company, you tender, you company don't tender, no. The company tender willingly, the contracts committee sits. This case, like I said, is almost as if Gambians, some of them don't want positive change. You had an issue where you had zero waste collection in KMC. Now you have over 70 plus waste collection. Yeah. So now, 
from your own point of view, as a businessman, as an individual that is out there doing business, and also the uh, mayor of KMC, itela miralo, itela jibero, ya mirako, kome nyun troko, for a jatale purmoe sang five million dollar silaba, put truck killing. I am not a truck importer. I don't know what truck importers charge for their profit. But if you are telling me that you found a factory price in China for any item for $3 million and it is sold in the Gambia for $5.1 million, I will believe you. Because when you import, you are not importing to make loss. When you import, you will have cost. Factory price, that is what they are selling it at the factory. So if we were in China, if it was Guangzhou Area Council or Fushan City Council, and we bought the truck three million in China, okay, that's fine. But if you have to import the truck, put it on freight, because as a businessman, I know when you do roller, because these trucks go on what they call roller cargo, each truck can cost you as much as $10,000 to transport to the Gambia. In our case, we had to pay duty. Secondly, the businessman has to make a margin. Car importers, I believe, are making margins up to 50% to 70%. And in this particular case, KMC is not paying upfront. KMC is paying over a three-year period with 18% interest in local banks annually. So yes, I can believe it. But at the end of the day, I am not a truck importer. I cannot tell you what truck importers charge. All I can tell you as a policymaker and as a governance body is the procurement processes were followed. Okay, sign. Uh, covering all the business or all the experts or prior to getting into business with experts in order to have these trucks uh, procured. For Alman C as a council, Kasi ka miracle, Tonya, 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 Nyanda Jibela, for you price only that better at five million. Wale dama betia five million la nyanta katala ka bid down wala betia tale na bulate na lio kacha ke farmo kacha. So the contracts committee does that rule. So what you did like this, I'm sure if you went and interviewed the contracts committee, they will tell you they have also looked at the factory price at China. I am pretty sure they will tell you that. So the contracts committee will do what they call due diligence. We'll see if the price charge is value for money. And they will also compare what other local vendors are charging. Okay, so if other local yeah. vendors are charging close to that amount, they will see whether these trucks are valid for money. Secondly, they will enter a negotiation period with the vendor. And it's a back and forth. Do you know the buses procured by GTSE, how much they cost? No, no, wait, wait. No, I'm asking. I, I, no, no, I, do you know? No, I, you are you trying know? to deviate. No, I'm not deviating. About I'm, giving you, and, I'm giving you an audience. Yeah, yeah. Wait, I cannot forget. I, no, I have, have questions uh, to answer. We have a lot of things to This is why we cannot here. get along. Because you have because to allow me, me to, to answer ask. your question But fully. I need to quote you. Wait, so, there are so certain... you can understand. Do you know okay, a Toyota okay. Prado? No problem. Come. You know a Toyota Prado, five-seater, purchased by Gambia government, cost $5.8 million. Do you know a Land Cruiser, purchased by Gambian government, cost up to $10 million? Do you know the vehicles that Gambia government officials are driving are six, seven, eight million dollars If a truck this size serving the local community cost $5 million at the retail price in the Gambia, I'm not saying in China, I'm saying in the Gambia, is that, a that is not a big deal. Okay, is that a justification for truck or some price or mina? No, I'm good. giving you relativity so you understand the context of Gambian prices. Hey, that's a Gambia question. is an impost based economy. We don't have factories building trucks here. We are importing all these materials. Meaning, five million is good price to get these trucks. I'm not saying it's a good price. I'm not saying it's a bad price. What I'm saying, based on the contracts committee's work, is it a good price? Based on the contracts committee work, I believe it's a good price because after their work was done, after they negotiated, they recommended to the council, we thought this was the best value for money for what is available locally within what the Procurement Act allows. Okay. If I had my way, let me tell you, if Tali Ben Suda had his way and did not have to go by Gambia procurement rules, I would have preferred to import directly. But that is not the law. We cannot go and import directly from China. 
we have to procure from local vendors and the law was made that way to support local business okay now let me come in there yeah. i played an audio for you here and i want to be fair with you i mm. don't want us to jump yeah. without coming back to that because that is an allegation so i want to put, put that back to you again according to your ceo although you have made it clear that during the time of the procurement of the vehicles she was not in office of this course. happened in 2019 and she came in 2020 so uh you made it clear she was in there so now these allegations are coming from the CEO of Carnifin Municipal Council. She's saying that there is an inflation over $2 million on the, on the uh, procurement of these vehicles. What is your, your take on this? She said those allegations based on the same evidence you have provided today that a gossip blog once put up. You know, awareness and education is very important and you have to utilize it. When you see something is alleged without evidence, it's almost smoke without fire. The evidence, it is what is important. Now, of course, like I said, when we started this project, she was not CEO. And of course, all of these stories are only coming out when we caught certain people, including herself, in some activities. When it was discovered, according to the audio you played. How come the evidence was not taken to the police? One. Two, like I said, all CEOs of councils know that CEOs are the ones who procure, not policymakers. You can chase policymakers around for days, but end of day, we don't procure anything. I don't have access to KMC's checks. I don't make any payments. I don't have the authority to make any payments. I don't have the mandate to enter into negotiation with any vendor. That is not my role. I don't have the power. I don't have the authority. I don't have the access, okay. nor does any councillor. So the only person who's answerable for the finances of the council is the chief executive officer and the finance director. Okay, let so me end of me. day, if you say the mayor has done something, it is an impossibility based on how councils are structured. Okay, let now, of course, we are in a period of elections. We are in a period where people are very determined that they want to see Mayor Tali Ben Sudogon. But I always say, do it truthfully. Because end of day, if there's so any such evidence, it should have been produced to the police. And I encourage them. I encourage them right now. If you have any evidence that there's been any corruption on KMC, including myself, go and produce it to the police. Why do we have to make audios? So now... I want us to take a look at something very important sure. here. Uh, Senator Martins made an audio here claiming that Talib Ben Suda is a criminal. And your critics out there too are saying Talib Ben Suda is a criminal. So uh, is, is it true that Talib Ben Suda is a criminal or he's not I a criminal? I think that is the worst question a journalist has ever asked me. Is, is it true that the president is a criminal? Is it true that Gambia government is a criminal? I mean, we are politicians. People will say good about us. People will say but bad it's about a question. us. Just, it's up to you to I think it's a terrible question. I will never answer that question. You will not answer no. that. All right. So uh, are you aware that there are a lot of things happening at KMC with regards to the Ministry of Management of Finance? Are you aware so of this? In 2020, the internal audit unit wrote to my office that they had discovered that two transactions or three transactions to the tune of 200 and something thousand were deleted from the rates system. They reported to my office. We empowered that internal audit unit to strengthen internal control. When they reported to my office, I forwarded the matter to the finance committee chaired by Councillor Karamo Sisi to conduct an investigation on the matter. The matter was reported to the police. So this is one incident of $200,000, which is a norm in all institutions where there's issues of mismanagement or corruption. The question is, how do you deal with it when it is discovered at an institution? But that does not mean KMC has mismanagement just because of one incident. We have prosecuted almost 20 staff found wanting on corruption. Have you ever seen any other council? We all know corruption is rife in Gambia, in Gambia government, in most councils, in most institutions. But we are the ones fighting it. That's why it is known. If I, as mayor, 
never took up this case, you will never know about it. Because it was simply not future. So the fact you know about it today is because I, as mayor, took up this matter and opened up an investigation committee. <laughs> That's why the National Audit Office caught it. There's another incident that you don't know about. was a staff that stole almost $250,000 from a hotelier. That matter we prosecuted and the staff was dismissed. There's several matters like that. There's other matters where staff told, stole GTRs. A lot of these issues in standard institutions are brushed under the carpet and forgotten about. But in KMC, we fight it head on. And this is why people know about it. Even the matter with the current CEO and the, and the other staff, we could have brushed it under the carpet. But we push for an investigation. We ask for the police to fight it. So all this trouble you find today, counter allegations, etc., is because we are fighting corruption. I said it in the last interview. I fought corruption and corruption decided to fight back. Okay, let me because come in there. Because if yeah. the government of the day or the authorities responsible were interested, when we reported this case, it should have been investigated to the latter. Okay, let me... Let and me... all the counter allegations made should have been equally investigated. I want us so to today, yeah, I you will not to... even have to go back and forth. Yeah. This should have been at the police yeah. because that's what we wanted. I, as I, a I want to stick to this topic. I'm glad that you yeah. accepted that it had happened. And you know you have taken steps. Yes, there is where I'm driving. There steps. is where I'm driving at. Yeah. So uh, now, the people that were or are involved in this are they still with the council or they are no longer there? The persons who were involved are no longer with the council, but the matter is under the police. Have you made follow up? Yes, of course. There's a committee. I, as mayor, I'm not the committee. There's a finance committee no, you, you responsible are, the reason when I that I have reported, I have reported to the committee. There, so. The committee reports to the council periodically on several police cases. There's about 10 ongoing police cases. One is uh, stolen railings from our Koto Park. So a council has 1,400 staff with many departments and many units. There's always reports of leakages, reports of uh, malpractices. It is not the report. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. All the institutions you see in the Gambia get consistent reports on malpractice, get consistent reports on corruption cases. The issue is, is anybody taking up those cases? What I am assuring you right now so is KMC takes up all cases of corruption very seriously, and they are almost immediately investigated as soon as they are reported. Okay, uh, since you have claimed to be a champion in the fight against corruption at KMC. I am a champion okay. of the fight against corruption. Okay, in, at KMC. Mm -hmm. uh, your very good friend, the, the former deputy mayor of KMC, yeah. Musaba, was mm -hmm. caught on tape soliciting bribe. And I'm sure you're privy to this. What of have course. you done about so, this? So when Musaba was reported, he was engaged. When he was engaged, he took an excuse that he would resign because his mother was sick. His mother, sorry, passed away. God bless her soul. And of course, if somebody resigns and say, my mother passed away, that's all I can report because that's what is in the letter. But when the matter was reported to the council, the council set up an investigative committee led by Councillor Musa Cham of London Corner, who is a PDOIS councillor. We said, let him lead it because he's not of the same party. Councillor Pala Minjiba of Abuko, who's an APRC councillor, was instituted as part of that panel. An expert called Modu Gay, who's part of our appointments and establishment committee, was included in that panel of investigation. When they started their investigation, the Ministry of Lands and Local Government put up an inspection team who came to council to investigate the same matter. A a a along with other allegations made by, like you said, the former CEO, allegations made by uh, ourselves, etc. And they spent three months in council. So when those investigative team took up the matter, the committee led by Musa Cham said, well, since now the ministry, a bigger body, is investigating the same matter, then we will now hand over to them. And this is the question, uh, Sultan, is that after that investigation was done, how come there was no action based on the reports found by the ministry? I think this is the real question. Look, we are not... KMC is the institution that invites investigation. Okay, let me... Let me let because me, let me tell let me you, okay. we are audited by the National Audit Office annually. 
We are inspected by the ministry quarterly. We are scrutinized by the local government select committee, FPAC, GPPA, and we invite investigations. We always write to the police, investigate. If there is any allegation on anybody, and the mayor is no exception, investigate it thoroughly by the authorities that have the expertise to investigate it. Okay. So the reason today everybody is talking about allegations and not investigations is because we are in election period. Okay. Because these matters are not matters of today. We are talking 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. How come these matters are not investigated? Okay, let me come in there, Talib. You know, uh, you're talking about investigation, investigation. Yeah. I don't want to dig into polemics with you with regards to that. Uh, I don't want to tell you what I do, how I do it. That's not important here. So what is important here is to ask you questions. No, I'm not saying the, you. Yeah, I'm saying no, I, I, investigating I, by the I, general yeah, uh, police body. I understand yeah. now. Yeah. I just want us to stick to the course so that we will not deviate. Because I have some very interesting questions sure. for you here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, coming back to Musa's topic, uh, Musa is in the same party with you. So yes. you being the um, uh, mayor of KMC, mm -hmm. at the same time a strong supporter or a strong member of M uh, uh, UDP, mm -hmm. what have you done about Musa's case at party level? Oh, there's no, like I said, Musa's case is an allegation that needs to be investigated. But he was caught on tape. Well, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not an investigator. I am not a tape expert. He was, all I can he do, was caught on tape. All I can so do as, wait, all I'm saying, all I can do as mayor, when there's an allegation, just like with this year, it's no different. I have to hand that allegation to the right authorities. That is my role. I am not an investigator. I am not a judge. I am not a jury. Even if it's a staff that is alleged to do something, all I can do is to institute a committee. All I can do is to hand over that case and push for that case to be investigated. But have you and enjoyed Musa's, your party? It's no different. I have done my part. Have you enjoyed your party with regards to Musa's case? We are not talking no, about I KMC cannot now. engage my party because there's no resolution on the case. The case has to be investigated. I cannot I cannot be the judge, I cannot be the jury. I am not an expertise in investigation. Just but like you are all the one cases, that is at the helm of affairs. No, but KMC, what I'm saying, I think you are mis he was misconstruing your, and, my and he was statements. Your what I'm saying. Okay. Whether there is a staff that is alle alleged to be corrupt, whether it is a councillor, whether it is a CEO or director of finance or the deputy mayor himself, I as a mayor, my responsibility is to present to the council to constitute an investigation panel or to hand the evidence to the police or to in encourage government to investigate. But that's where my job stops. I cannot prosecute. I cannot judge. I cannot make a decision on that. That is a body that, that, that is charged with the law to do that, not me. So all I can do is present or constitute a panel to investigate the matter. And I so, did that. So meaning you haven't reported the matter to your party? I cannot report the matter. I don't understand. But that's I not mean, my Musa's role. Case. Okay, that's not your that's role. That's not my role. Okay. I'm a mayor. I am, uh, there's no role for me in the party to report such cases. Okay. And what I'm saying is, if the authorities that are responsible found who and who and who wanting, they will then do the right thing according to law. And then the party, the people who are supposed to make decisions will make decisions. All right, let's, let's, let's uh, get to something else. Mm -hmm. The Mbali pro project, Project Onion Design Danyama, Atelenyanta Fongola Staff of Jola, is this happening or not? Yes, the Mbali generates enough money to pay for its, all its expenses. Is it paying its staff? Yes, it generates enough money to pay its staff, its fuel, its maintenance but it generates just that much. The rest of the money is paid for by council through taxpayers' funds. But even the money that the Mbali charge, the fees are all taxes. These are all locally generated funds from taxpayers. So whether you call it prepaid, whether you call it fees, whether you call it token, whether it's all taxes because it's coming from the pockets of taxpayers to provide services for the taxpayers. But it does generate enough income to pay for its expenses. Okay, how about the payment of the vehicles? Was it paid by the project itself? It's paid solely, mostly by taxpayers' funds. Taxpayers' funds? Yes, through the three-year period. Okay, not by the project itself? Not by the project itself. The project cannot generate enough to pay for those trucks. That's why I told you, this project is very unique and novel, and the vendor went into a pre-financing arrangement to allow us to pay for it over time. 
So the vendor himself or themselves had to go and borrow the money, pay interest for the money they borrow, and then they have to come into a pre-arranged uh, financing arrangement with us. All right, let's let's shift our gears a little bit. Yeah. Now, uh, finna bi jamia la kuma ada baaki. So ngana ngasawundiro ke damandi. Ah, KMC mudulal de mea alongo. Ah, it's one of the the councils meli along ko lonta baake gambia and the findita baake gambia mo membi da siad you have a lot of employees there mm -hmm. so uh could you explain to me uh how employment is done at the council at kmc carnival municipal council how employment is done there kmc has a establishment appointments committee so they are the ones charged to do employment for the council have you employed anyone yourself directly no. the mayor you see I don't know whether it's a blessing or not, but mayors don't have the power to do much. We only have the power to lead arguments, to communicate our vision, to encourage people to move towards that vision and work as a team together. We lay down ideas and policies and ideas, but every single decision made by the council is made by the council via a vote or a council resolution. Are you so many to people tell me believe have, we are, yeah. many, many people believe we are so powerful, but we are not. Are you trying to tell me you have not employed anyone? I don't have the power to employ anybody. No, it's not about if whether you have the power or not. The question is, have you? I cannot because I don't have the power. Have you? I cannot. The question is not if you can or you cannot. Have you ever? I can't. Yes or no? I can't. It's, I think it's as simple as that. <laughs> If I didn't have legs and you say, Mayo, can you walk? I cannot walk. You say, Mayo, are you walking? I'm not no, walking. Might walk. I cannot walk. <laughs> you might walk without. Uh, well, I cannot. <laughs> so I, I just simply cannot. But this is a serious question. I simply cannot. Okay, do you know Aisafal? Yes. Former public, proc uh, former public relations manager. Yes. KMC. Mm -hmm. How was he employed? Through the council. Can you explain the process to me? Like I said, we have an establishment and appointments committee. Even if you wanted to work for the council, you came to my office, I will refer your CV to the HR, and the HR will take it to the establishment and appointment committee. Okay, there are allegations that you have uh, given favors to certain people, of course, people that doesn't have the qualification to work at certain capacity at the council. So eventually, you looked at the connection that you have or the relation that you have with those people and you decided to create some ways in order for them to be able to work at the council. These are the allegations like we are hearing. Is, are these allegations true or not? I, I don't know. Your question is very broad. When you say, I have created ways, who, what, when, simple how? Simple question. Who, who, what, when, how? It's a simple question. It, it's a very broad question. I don't know how Can to Can I break it. it down for you? Yes, yeah, sure. All right, good. There are allegations that you have given opportunities to certain people for them to come to the council and work there. Like who? By creating ways. Like who? Like Isafal. Like I said, if today you wanted to work for the council, whether is I know you or is not. Is this true? No, what I'm saying is I don't have the power. I cannot. So if, for have example, you ever influenced? Let, me, let, me, let, me, okay. let me tell you something. Okay. As a mayor, I am there for everybody and anybody. People looking for scholarship, people looking for work, people looking for business opportunities. I am a mayor. People naturally will come to your office and say, Oh, mayor, dama udlige. Oh, mayor, dama buga am business. Oh, mayor. My office is like a male office. I say, Okay, lo udlige. Refer nala to HR. Oh, ulo koro ud business. Refer nala to procurement. I cannot. All I can do is tell you who to go to. For what? If you came and you say you have a problem at market, Sarakunda market, I will refer you to the market manager. I am a mayor. But if, you have, if you, I am, I am you there, have influence. No, you? but I don't use my influence. You don't use your no. influence. Okay, ISA served as your, one of the most active people during your campaign. And um, from credible sources, uh, she worked at KMC, which you accepted to be a reality. But no, I don't accept that. I can only refer. So if, for no, example, you accepted that's that what I'm saying. I saw uh, worked at KMC. Oh yes, she worked at that KMC. That is what I'm saying. Yeah. Which you accepted that she worked there. Yes. Exactly. That is, that, that is what I'm saying. Yeah. So now, let's take a look at this girl's case here, based on the allegations that we have received. Mm. So uh, we were told that you facilitated her employment at KMC. I cannot. You did not. I cannot. 
you should... I think you have to understand my limitations. Anybody who knows me, is it is there a rule that it's a says, simple question you, now? I'm, what I'm asking you. I is, want to bring you what back. I'm saying is, there's no rule that says ne. So how many mayor you cannot work for KMC? If you are related to mayor, you cannot do business with KMC. If you are somehow affiliated, no, that's not. If you want to work for KMC, and you come and apply and work for KMC, and KMC takes you for work, should they fire you because you know mayor, or you have been mayor? It's just like the president. The president had many people part of his campaign. All of them are working for government at various levels. Everybody who was in the president's campaign team or around the is a politician. They're all working for government. It doesn't mean that the president hired them directly. No. But they're all working for government. So why is okay, it okay, any different for a mayor okay, or a councillor or whatnot? Isa was part of your campaign team. Isa was part of it. The, and eventually, after you winning, we saw her working for the council. She applied and got the job. You did not use your influence? No. Okay. All right, so let's, let's shift our gears. We still have some very important things to do, things to talk about here. Okay. Now, of uh, your very good sister, of course, your very good colleague, Senabu Martins, who eventually turned to be an individual that doesn't see eye to eye with you, is presently in a huge tussle with you. What went wrong? Munekeda? Well, she's not in a huge tussle with me. Um, and like you said, I have no issue with her. Uh, we had never had issues. We had a very good relationship, very good working relationship. And there's no tussle. There's still no personal issue. Maybe others have personalized it. Maybe she has personalized it. I have not. I got a report from the staff welfare that they had gone for a loan on behalf of the staff welfare without their authority, and namely her and the director of finance. Now, of course, I am not a member of the staff welfare, and the staff welfare have their own executive and their whole modus operandi. My question is, well, how can they get a loan and they are not executives, because the staff welfare's executive, uh, she came when the executive was already formed. Then I was told that she got a loan through Ajib Bank. And I said, well, how did Ajib Bank issue them the loan? So I called the Ajib Bank CEO, the MD. The Ajib Bank CEO told me, well, they got this loan via a council guarantee. This is where I had a problem because the council guarantee cannot be given without my knowledge. The council guarantee can only be given with the consent of the council via a vote by the council. Meaning if they default on that loan, which was $12 million, the taxpayers would have to pay. Meaning council would have to pay $12 million from taxpayers' funds to fill that hole. And that is very illegal. This is the problem. That is an illegal act. And when we ask the bank, well, how did they get a council resolution without the consent of the council? They said she wrote them a letter that the council gave them their resolution. So that's the problem, because that is fraud. So we had an excellent working relationship until that day, until that matter. This is what broke down the relationship. Well, at that point, it was not broken down because I had detected an fraudulent activity. I invited her to my office with the director of finance, with the executives of the staff welfare who were involved, and all the directors of council. And in my words, I said, this is a very fraudulent activity and an act that is unforgivable because it is illegal. Even the council, the law does not allow the council to go for loans without the consent of the minister. Because if the council defaults on that loan, it is Gambia government who has to pay. Let alone 
as a CEO and a director of finance going for a loan without the consent of the council. But it is one thing to say that I am negligent and it's a mistake and I am aware or ignorant of the fact. It is another thing to be advised by the bank that you cannot take this guarantee without the consent of the council and you go and forge the guarantee of the council. Now that is fraudulent. That is no longer ignorant. That is no longer negligent. That is fraudulent. So are you trying to tell so, that she forged she forged? Yes, these are documents. all evidence. I'm not talking on allegations. I'm talking on black and white signatures. Okay. So let me let me let me, let me come in there. Yeah. Called a director's meeting. Okay. And I said, this cannot be forgiven. They all admitted. She admitted to doing everything. That she forged asked, documents. Yes. And okay. asked for forgiveness. I said, this is not something I can forgive. This is not my personal house. So basically, this is how the matter started. We took the evidence to the Ministry of Lands and Local Governments, requesting for her uh, dismissal. We took the evidence to the police for, for investigation. And in the meantime, we asked her to go on administrative leave until she was proven innocent, which is standard council procedure. And we've done it many times under the same regime. And it was never disputed. The council has the power via the Local Government Act to direct its CEO to go on administrative leave. What the act says is the CEO is under the direction and control of the council and answerable to its council. Okay. Yeah, that's that's true. That is what the law says. But then coming to Senabus, uh, coming to something that is very important about Senabus matter here is Senabu was uh, employed by the uh, local uh, government service commission, an act that was an, a, a body that was um, created by an act of parliament. So therefore, if she is to be dismissed, I'm sure she should be dismissed by the local government service commission yeah. through. Yes, through your recommendation. Yeah, exactly. So now, Senab was asked to return back to work after a court ruling that she should return back to work. She should not be asked to go home. Yet, Talib Ben Suda said Senab will not access her office. Why did you do that? So, number one, there's no court ruling that says she should come back to work. When we asked her to go on administrative leave, the government tried to use force to make her to come back when the council had already voted via a council resolution. At that point, we realized that the government was not following due process and was not following the law. We sought an injunction, which was granted by the court. An interim injunction pending a permanent injunction. After one and a half years of hearing, the court said, based on the case of Yakumba Jaite, which is precedence, so law works by precedence, that they do not have the power as a court to prevent a public officer from doing their public duties. As a court, they did not have the power. So the court was speaking to their limitations. What the council was saying is, okay, you don't have the power, but the law, the local government access, the CEO is under direction and control. We can ask her to go on administrative leave. Remember, with full pay. Yeah, but direct, with full pay yeah. until all this case had to take was one day. It didn't need to take two years. All the commission or the police needed to do was investigate and prove innocent or guilty. Innocent, go back to work, fine. Guilty. You cannot go back to work. It is a one-day case wrapped up into political posturing and push and pull for no reason. Because if the case was investigated, allegations were made, evidence was provided. If counter allegations were made and evidence is provided, then you investigate and find whoever is wanted. So it did not need to take this long. So our question is, why did... <coughs> Why does it have to be like this? All we are saying is this allegation or this evidence was found just like any other staff. And like you said, we had an excellent relationship until that day. But when it comes to such matters, I, I'm not biased. When it
it comes to such matters, I will present all and all evidence that I have. Okay, it took two years to two come years. with a con it took almost two years to come up with a conclusion with regards to Shenabu Martin's case. Mm -hmm. uh, why did it take this long? I don't know. Because what I don't understand is when we sent the case, it was investig uh, it was uh, not investigated. Instead, government was saying, no, 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 she should come back to work. Okay, there's two issues here, Sultan. There's an administrative issue and there's a legal or criminal issue. If you say, okay, we are arguing that the council did not go through the right administrative processes. Okay, we can argue on that side. But why should that stop the legal process from proceeding? As the government and KMC are arguing on administrative processes, the police, nothing should stop the police from investigating. Why is the police prevented from investigating? In the law, the IGP is independent. Even if a small child rep reports a crime, it must be investigated. Okay, let me go. So we don't understand why it took that long. Secondly, the ministry sent an inspection team, if you recall. When there was a push and pull, they selected a hand-picked inspection team, three from the Ministry of Lands and Local Government, three from the Ministry of Finance Internal Audit Unit. They spent three months in KMC. They interrogated everybody, the deputy mayor on his alleged corruption, the CEO, the director of finance, everybody, every councillor, myself. They investigated everybody and came up with a report about their findings. I know today many people have the report. But when the report came, this was two years ago, they suppressed it and refused to enact on the report or even make it public or even acknowledge its existence. So when I tell you this is all about politics, it's because it's all about politics. Because that report could have been used. They could have asked the police to investigate. We could have finished and be done with this case two years back. Okay, let me, let me come in here. Uh, since you claim to be a champion in the fight against corruption, uh, and you said, according to you, Senabu Martins is allegedly involved in a corruption scandal, and therefore you are not biased. You will do everything possible to make sure what is expected to be done is done. Now, why are you denying the government from setting up a commission in order to ensure they dig into certain activities that are happening at the country? I cannot deny the government. To corruption. I cannot deny the government from setting up the co commission. I don't have that power. But you don't, you don't definitely don't want that commission to be. No, I don't, I don't oppose the commission. You did not oppose the commission? No. We saw a video of you saying, why is the commission coming up? It's a political move. No, I'm saying the timing. The timing. I'm not, I'm not against the commission. I'm saying the timing. Now we are getting to somewhere. Yeah. Meaning you don't want it to happen now. No. At I this said, moment. At this moment, we are going it's not, for elections. It's not suitable for you. We are going for elections. It's not Election suitable interference. For you. It's not read suitable. The, read the Elections Act of the Gambia. It says when people are going for elections, they should not be impeded in any way or form. They should not be distracted, interrupted. The evidence will not expire. The people will not disappear. We are all here. So if it happened last year, it's okay. But right now, is we are in election period, councillors are going to election in exactly three weeks' time. Mayors are going to election in exactly six weeks' time. So we can wait till after elections and enact the commission. Nobody is opposed to the commission. The first commission, uh, you, ministerial, you. ministerial commission of inquiry, we went to court. The reason we went to court, the minister set up an inspection investigation team, investigated. They did not produce a report. And they did not tell anybody what they found. And then they all of a sudden and said, oh, we are going to set up a ministerial commission of inquiry. And we are like, okay, but you investigated us. Why don't you tell us what you found? Why do you just jump and set up a ministerial commission of inquiry? So we challenge in court as to the basis of that ministerial commission of inquiry. Because we believed it was done in bad faith. Look, let's say the obvious. They're after me. It's a witch hunt. They're after the council because it's an opposition council. We do not see any action being done that is in good faith or to find justice. And when we challenged that ministerial commission of inquiry, that is when the high court judge said, 
in any commission of inquiry, a preamble must be produced. And what the access, a minister can enact a ministerial commission of inquiry when there's a report of a serious finding on the council. But then that report must be made public. So when we challenge as to the basis of this ministerial commission of inquiry, that is when the court produced the inspector's report. The one they had produced, meaning the investigation they conducted at council. And that's when we realized the reason why they did not want to produce that report. Because there was no finding on any council member or the mayor. All the findings were on the case we reported to be investigated. Okay. So now, of course, we have come to a juncture where we were fighting a different case at the Supreme Court, which was, we do not believe as elected, democratically elected officers, that we should prematurely leave the council without an uh, 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 election. Parliament are not prematurely leaving the council. The president is not prematurely leaving the office of the president. It is happening nowhere in the world. Why don't we wait until our election before we leave the council? We won that case at the Supreme Court. And all of a sudden, now they say there's a presidential commission of inquiry, which we believe is connected to our court case that we won. However, we are not saying that we are opposed to it. We are saying that the timing is not a good time. Okay. It should be done after our election. Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me get into something here. According to your, your CEO, the chief executive officer of Carnival Municipal Council, he helped someone facilitated a project for that individual kind of a municipal council, like you, Talib Ben Souda, would always help people that are part of your party to have so projects if, at KMC. So if Is this CEO, true or so not? So wait, if a CEO says, I help somebody, that can be true. Because the CEO signs checks, okay. the CEO issues contracts, the CEO employs people. The CEO is the one operating the council. But when somebody says, the mayor helps somebody, that is a very big allegation because I said, see, the mayor does not sign checks. The mayor does not employ anybody. The mayor does not have that power. Okay. I don't sit on any committee. There's agriculture committee, education committee. I cannot give scholarships. The mayor's office is a referral office. So, for example, if people come and say, I have this problem, I have that problem, I refer you. So if you write, for example, and you say, I want to come work as a PR manager for KMC, you write to my office. I will say, HR or CEO, forward for your attention. Have you ever inf used your influence to facilitate um, projects for members of your party or members of, or people that are actually closer to you? I cannot use my influence. Have you I ever helped? Have, power. have you ever helped Ibrahim Adiba of UDP to have a project at KMC? If Ibrahim Adiba came to KMC and got any project, he got it at his own merit. In my KMC, have I have you, seen... Have you done this In before? KMC, I have seen APRC... The question wait, is... Wait, let, me, let, me, let me help you. Okay. In KMC, I have seen... I am there, I am seeing. I have seen APRC supporters get contracts in my time. I have seen NPP supporters get contracts in my time. I have seen UDP supporters get contracts in my time. People I have known to be open supporters of these parties. I have seen people who don't support any party get contracts. I have seen likely... Likewise, I have seen NPP people get shops at markets. I have seen UDP people say get shops at markets. I have seen GDC people get shops at markets. APRC people get shops at markets. Equally, I have seen these same people get scholarships at KMC. The one thing we are proud of is that we have not discriminated anybody politically. We do not alienate. We don't use our influence to box people out of KMC. No, every Gambian, whether you have a business, whether you're going to school, whether you're looking for a market, you have a right to solicit anything from KMC. The question we ask our contracts committee as policymakers is not which political parties people belong to, but what quali qualifications they have to deserve those projects. So if your contracts committee is giving a project to somebody or giving, they check based on merit, but not on your tribe, your religion, your political affiliation. That does not matter. As far as you are Gambian, you are qualified. All right, let's shift our gears. Uh, let's take a look at the mayoral elections 2023, quickly. Mm. 
Now there are a lot of allegations revolving around you. Uh, with all the allegations revolving around sure. you, uh, are you confident of winning? Of course. Uh, second term. The only reason they are bringing up allegations is because they are not confident of winning. You see, if you are confident of winning, you don't talk about people. You talk about ideas. So there's a whole project with the opposition, which is the Gambia government. You know my opposition is not Bakari Baji. It's Gambia government. They are so determined that they need my seat or they need KMC to turn into NPP. That they have this project they, it's called defamation of character and smear campaign. They don't believe that in an equal footing they can defeat me because we have impacted people's lives in KMC all over, widespread, and in a very big way. You cannot tell KMC resident that you don't see the development under Mayor Ben Sudan and his council. You cannot tell a KMC resident that you did not feel the development under Mayor Ben Sudan and his council. What they are now saying is, okay, we know you've seen the development. We know you've felt the development. But it's a bad development. It's a corrupt development. These people are not who you think they are. Talib is bad. Talib is this. So it is not a competition of ideas. It is a competition of who can spread that on the other person. And that's why I said, five years, four years we've been in council. You want to tell me you have no evidence? on any malpractice we did, you wait in elections and all you have is allegations, then the purpose is just how can you tarnish our image to win elections. That's why we have all these commission of inquiries, all these things. So I think most Gambians know the truth anyway. But of course, uh, it's going to be a continuous battle, clarifications and whatnot, which I don't think is needed. My simple challenge to anybody is, okay, you have the evidence, take it to the police. You don't have to come on social media and tell stories or television and tell stories. So basically, we are very confident that we have the hearts and minds of people of KMC. But I don't think the other side is very confident. And this is why all these smear campaigns are starting. But our conscience is clear. Our mission is to focus. You see, as a mayor and as a candidate, I, this is the part of politics I don't like. And I'm not a politician. I'm a worker. I like to deliver. And I think time is of the essence. So I look at myself as a professional male, and I would rather come on these platforms and say, oh, this is my plan, this is my manifesto, this is my vision to uplift the people of KMC, and not, no, I really don't like that. Okay, uh, Bakar Baji is a youth leader, and of course a heavyweight contestant. Are you moved by the fact that he is um, ready to take you on? I think, first of all, I'm very impressed that they see me as such a big challenge that they have to make a minister, a sitting minister, to come and challenge me. Uh, I think it speaks about me more than it speaks about them. Because it's quite surprising that uh, a party, a ruling party, cannot produce a local government leader. And you have to get a minister who's still not resigned, is still a minister and may not even resign to come and challenge me while they are sitting minister. Uh, but at the end of the day, somebody has to challenge me, and I am pretty confident that I can take on anybody based on my track record. I have not seen anybody in the field right now that has given me a sleepless night, because it's about track record at the end of the day. Okay, uh, are you, and, are you... and the minister has been a minister for three years. And it's about the track record. I don't think there's anybody with a track record that can defeat mine in KMC. I, but at the end of the day, it's in the hands of KMC residents. Are you sure you will win? Yes, I'm sure I'll win. That's why I'm contesting. How sure are you? I'm pretty sure. Everything is in God's hands. But all we have is the confidence, the will, and the belief. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a pleasure to see you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <okay. laughs>